This video is sponsored by Wanderlust. So you want to start a YouTube channel. Well, you're in luck because 2021 is the perfect time to start investing in YouTube and online video content in general. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you my recommendations for a high quality, professional looking YouTube setup that won't break the bank. And to put my money where my mouth is, I'm filming this entire video right now only using the gear I recommend in this kit. So if you wanna see exactly what I'm using to film right now, stick around to the very end of the video. Hey there, my name is Tyler Harrington and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about content creation and technology and how to make money using both. So today we're gonna to cover all the things you need to get started on YouTube, including a camera, lighting, audio, stabilizers, and software. Now the recommendations in this video are definitely not going to be the cheapest options available, but they're also not going to be the most expensive. Now normally when people are deciding how they're going to spend their budgets, they start with the camera, but I actually think that's the wrong way to think about it. The audio and the lighting are going to make a much bigger impact on the way that your film looks and feels and how it's perceived compared to the camera. And if you have any sort of a modern smartphone in your pocket right now, you have a really amazing video camera that'll work perfect for YouTube. So we're gonna save all the camera recommendations for the very end, and we're gonna start with lighting. Hands down, the number one light that I recommend to anybody looking to purchase video lights in 2021 is the Amaran 100D or 200D. These brand new lights from Aperture are arguably the perfect YouTube studio light. At $199 and $299 respectively, these lights are an insane value. Not only are they super bright and color accurate, but they also feature the popular Bowens mount, so they work with tons of different light modifiers, not just from Aperture, and they are able to be controlled via Bluetooth. Now, the build quality of these Amaran series, the 100D and the 200D, aren't quite as good as their bigger brothers in the Lightstorm series, which feature all metal construction, but for something like YouTube, where you're probably just gonna set it up in a studio situation somewhere, you don't have to move it around too much, this is still a really insane value that you really can't pass up. Now, the only real difference between the 100D and the 200D is gonna be their maximum brightness, um, for the most part. If you want a really detailed look at these two lights and see them compared side by side, you want more information, check out Gerald Undone. He has a really awesome video comparing these two lights. I'll link to it in the description down below. Now to get the most out of your light, you're going to want to pair it with a softbox or some sort of a modifier to make the light source even bigger. So my absolute favorite modifier to use on the 200D is going to be the Light Dome version 2. It is a little on the pricey side at $219, but it is a really big soft light source. And because of its unique parabolic shape, it creates very soft and flattering light. And I just love that it's really easy to put together and take apart. Now, the only downside to this thing, aside from the price, is the fact that it is pretty big. Um, and depending on the size of space that you have to work with, it may be too big to fit in certain areas. So the other options I suggest from Aperture would be the Lantern, which is a really unique option that can kind of give you some versatility in terms of if you have to ever have to film with more than one person um, because of its spherical shape, it kind of throws lights in all directions, which can be nice. Um, or the Light Dome Mini, which is basically just like the Light Dome, just the smaller version of it. Now you can get really soft light using both of these smaller modifiers if you understand where to place your lights. I have an entire video actually about how to get soft light for video um, and it kind of breaks down some of the principles of what makes soft lighting it's not just having a giant light source so if you're interested in that there's uh, I'll leave the description the tag for it up here or it's in the description down below all right so now let's talk about audio so aside from lighting audio is one of the most overlooked areas of video and arguably one of the most important. So up until recently, the microphone that I recommended to almost everybody was the Tascam DR10L. This little $200 recorder and lavalier combo gives you really great audio quality. And because it record a dual track, you can record a safety track, it gave you almost the guarantee of solid audio almost no matter what. Well, recently, a new recorder has come out that actually guarantees you perfect audio no matter what, and it's actually $50 less. The Zoom F2 is a brand new little small recorder that has just come out, and what it actually features is the ability to record in 32-bit float. Now, if you have no idea what 32-bit float means, that's okay, it doesn't really matter. All you need to know is that 32-bit float has the ability to record very loud sounds as well as very soft sounds simultaneously. 
And what this means is that when you get your file back into the computer, it is almost impossible to have messed it up. So even if you record it really, really soft or way too loud, there is almost no fear of having any sort of hiss from raising the levels in post or there's no real ability to clip it no matter what. So this is a really great option. And the reason why I think it's perfect for somebody just getting started is that if for some reason you don't set your levels perfect, you don't quite get them just right, you don't really have to worry about it because you can really easily fix these in post and still have a really solid audio recording. Either way, these are both some really awesome, affordable and high quality sounding recorders. The only reason I can't flat out recommend the Zoom F2 is because I've never personally used Used it. Um, I will link some videos down below that kind of compare the two so you can kind of decide for yourself. That's all I'm really going based off of. Um, but I do think either way you can't go wrong. Okay, now let's talk about tripods. Tripods are a little bit boring to talk about, so I'll go through this pretty quickly. You don't need to spend a ton of money on a tripod, especially if you're just gonna be doing static stationary shots like this, but you also don't wanna buy the cheapest tripod on Amazon just because you are putting a potentially very expensive piece of equipment on there. You don't want anything happening to it. If you plan to do anything that involves any sort of movement like B-roll shots or anything that's gonna involve you panning or tilting the camera, you're gonna to wanna to invest in a fluid video head. So I personally use the Manfrotto 500 fluid video head with a 190X video aluminum tripod. It's about $349 and this is a little bit on the pricey side, but because it has a self-leveling stick in the middle, I don't know what the technical term is for that, um, it's really great for video and it has a higher weight capacity. So as you upgrade in the future, potentially to bigger, more expensive cameras, you won't have to buy a new tripod. Now, if you travel, you need something more compact. I found the Milibu Mufa aluminum travel tripod kit with fluid head on b and I think that looks like a really awesome option. I've never used it personally, but that seems like a really great one that does have a fluid head. So again, I think that fluid head is really important. A lot of travel tripods you'll find don't have a fluid head. They just have a little ball head on the top, which again is perfect for photography or static shots like this, but having that fluid head is really, really nice. And if you're interested in vlogging, I really highly suggest you look into the Switch Pod. This was made by Pat Flynn and Caleb Wojcik. They are fellow YouTubers and podcasters, and they created this specifically with YouTubers in mind. Um, it's a really great metal build, little tabletop slash like vlogging tripod um, that I think is just really awesome. And they're awesome guys, so it's nice to support them. Okay, now we can talk about cameras. And I would say if and only if you have money left in your budget, after buying all the things I mentioned above, then we can start talking about and looking into purchasing a camera. Like I said at the very beginning, the video quality from the phone in your pocket is going to look incredible, especially if you're using really good lighting and you have really good audio. Most people probably won't be able to even tell that you're filming on a cell phone. So my theory is that if you're gonna buy a camera, you want it to be something that's gonna be significantly better in quality than your phone. So I suggest having at least as a minimum like $1,500, probably closer to $2,000 for a camera and a lens combo to make it worth the investment in a camera so you'll actually be able to see and notice that image quality difference over your phone. So the camera that I suggest right now is the Canon EOS R. Now, this is a full frame mirrorless camera from Canon that's actually a couple years old, but it starts at $1799 brand new. And because Canon just came out with some newer versions of this camera, the R6 and the R5, you can actually get the EOS R used for a really, really great price. Now, I recommend this camera for a lot of different reasons, but it has really, really great image quality. It uses the same full frame sensor that's found in the 5D Mark IV. So for video and for stills, you're gonna get some really amazing image quality. The 1080p looks really solid. The colors coming out of this camera look fantastic. Even if you don't know a ton about color grading, this camera is gonna give you really good looking image straight out of camera with very little color grading required. You do have the ability to shoot in 4K with the EOS R. It does have a severe crop, so this isn't necessarily the best option, but I honestly don't really think that 4K is necessary for YouTube, especially if you're first getting started. The EOS R has some of the best autofocus of any mirrorless or DSLR camera on the market, so this is really great for somebody who's filming themselves because it has face track and eye tracking, so you can just set the camera on a tripod and know that the autofocus is going to track you and you're going to be in focus and look really good.
good. And this camera is just really easy to use. It has a touch screen on it that is very similar to your iPhone. So even if you're taking photos or videos or what have you, you can just tap on the screen. You can see exactly what your exposure is gonna look like in your EVF. And this is the type of camera that I love because we can take it on vacation or something. We can hand it to a random person passing by and just tell them, point this at us and tap on our faces and it's gonna take the photo. And it's just really easy to use for anybody who's not really tech savvy, but you want some high quality DSLR quality photos. Another reason why I recommend the EOS R is because it uses the Canon RF mount. Now this is the newest um, lens mount system from Canon and they've already said that this is where they're pouring all of their R&D. This is the future of Canon lenses. So if you're going to start building a lens collection, this is where you want to do it. Now the older lenses, the EF lenses, can still work on this camera with an adapter. The adapter is only $99 and you don't lose any quality. So if you already have some EF lenses laying around or you find some used ones, you want to buy those, you can use them with this camera. But it also allows you to start investing in those RF lenses, which again is going to be the future of lenses from Canon. So the lenses I do recommend for the EOS R if you're just getting started is going to be the RF 50 1.8. And this is a really wide aperture 1.8. It's going to let a ton of light in. It's going to give you that really shallow depth of field that you want. And it's only $199, so you can't really go wrong. Also, I want to look into the RF 35 1.8. Um, this is a really awesome lens. It's a little more expensive at $499, but again, same thing, you're gonna let a ton of light in. You can get those really blurry backgrounds. Um, and this one is gonna be a little bit more versatile just because it's gonna be a little bit wider. Either one of these lenses is gonna be a great option. We've been outsourcing our wedding editing to Wanderlust for years, and it has by far been the best business decision we've ever made. For years, I fought the idea of outsourcing because every company I had found up until that point had either been too expensive to be realistic, or they just didn't meet the quality expectations that I had for my films until we found Wanderlust. Wanderlust was able to edit all of our wedding films at a price that made sense for our price point and at a quality that I was super, super happy with. And the process is super simple. You just choose the type of film you need edited, answer some specific questions about your project, and send over the footage. Everything is managed from a streamlined portal where you can chat with the Wanderlust team with any specific questions you might have, manage your revisions, and so on. Their turnaround times are quick and they've never missed a deadline. If you feel like your editing backlog is holding you back, from living your life or growing your business, you need to give Wanderlust a try. Thank you again to Wanderlust for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna save $50 on your first edit with Wanderlust, simply click on the link in the description below and you can try them out to see what it's all about. And then like I mentioned, if you do have some EF lenses or you're interested in picking up some used, you can always get the EF to RF adapter from Canon. It's only $99 and it doesn't have any loss of quality. It's a really great option. It's actually what I use most of the time when I'm using my EOS R just because I have so many EF lenses already, um, but it can be a really viable option if you wanna go that route. And then last but not least, let's talk about software. As we know, recording the video itself is only half the battle when it comes to YouTube. You also need to worry about your channel R and your thumbnails and uploading and all sorts of graphics and things like that to go into YouTube. So I have some suggestions. We're gonna fly through these really quickly. When it comes to editing, if you are on a Mac, I highly suggest looking into Final Cut Pro. If I could go back in time and get started editing again, I would honestly probably go with Final Cut Pro. Um, it allows you to use um, lower powered hardware. So if you're on an older MacBook, um, it is made by Apple. So it is designed to allow you to edit really seamlessly um, on underpowered hardware. So you don't need the latest and greatest or the fastest computer to edit even 4K files if you're editing in Final Cut Pro. It's also the easiest, I think, to just like pick up and learn. Um, and it has a really great range in terms of it's super easy to use and pick up for the first time, but it also has tons and tons of depth. So as you continue to grow and become a better editor and learn more about editing, Final Cut Pro can grow with you better than some of the other programs like Premiere Pro, which is what I actually edit in, that is, I think, a lot harder to pick up on the front end, um, but also has a ton of pro features once you get used to it. If you edit on a PC like I do, DaVinci Resolve is completely free and something I definitely would suggest looking into as maybe your first editing software. And then of course, Premiere Pro, which is what I use. Um, the only downside of Premiere Pro is that it is a monthly subscription from Adobe. So if you already have some Adobe programs that you are investing in, Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, those types of things, you do get um, Premiere Pro along with that. So if you can justify the price of $50 a month to use all those different programs, go for it. Um, but if not, there are free options out there. And then when it comes to graphics and lower thirds and 
thumbnails, I suggest looking into Canva. I think Canva is a really great online tool that you can use, get started with for free, and also has some paid upgrades and options and things like that. But it has lots of great templates for all different sizes of things you might need across all the different social media platforms. It's pretty intuitive, and they also have some really great looking templates that are easy to customize. My friend Trina Little has a really great YouTube video about how you can actually use Canva to create lower thirds and graphics that go in your video um, and how to animate those so they look really high end but they're really easy to make. So go check that out, just link in the description down below. Um, but Canva is just a really powerful tool for pretty much anything visual that you might need to do in association with your YouTube channel. And then last but not least, you wanna make sure that you are aware of how your channel is performing and all your analytics and your tags and things like that. And I use TubeBuddy to make that much easier to understand and they have a bunch of really powerful tools that can help you get the most out of your analytics and make sure that your video actually gets seen. So I'm gonna leave a link to TuneBuddy in the description down below. You can go sign up with my link in the description down below. Go check it out. Thanks, you're the best. All right, there you have it. Those are my 2021 YouTube starter kit year recommendations. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this entire video has been filmed only using the gear that I have recommended and mentioned in this video. So as you can see here, we are filming this with the Canon EOS R with the 50 millimeter 1.8 RF lens. Um, over here, we have the 200D with the aperture lantern right here. And in terms of audio, I am using the Tascam DR10L wireless lab, which is, you can't see it, it is right here under my shirt. So that is it. That is what I'm using to record this. And then obviously I have this backdrop back here. This was like $75 on Amazon and you can pick up like a $15 backdrop stand and then you can turn any room in your house into a YouTube studio. So that's it, this is what I'm using. Hopefully this goes to show you that you can use affordable gear. You don't need the best of the best. Like I know that when I film my YouTube videos, I film them with like really expensive gear and cinema cameras and boom mics and all sorts of stuff. But the truth of the matter is you don't need all that stuff. I like to use those things because one, it's my hobby and I, I enjoy it, but also I have all that equipment for the other parts of my life. So I make things for a living, like that is my job. So I use those cameras and all those tools for things other than YouTube. If I was only doing YouTube, I wouldn't have all that equipment. So don't think that you need to have really big fancy cameras or all these really fancy things, again, Hopefully this video is showing you. Hopefully this you think this looks good. All this equipment here can give you really professional, high quality results without breaking the bank. So if you have any questions about anything that I mentioned here, things you'd like to see, other things I might've missed, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to answer any questions that you might have. If you like this video, wanna see more just like it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I've got more videos just like this, helping you guys create content in 2021 coming really soon. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Tyler Harrington. I'll see you next week.